All right. Good morning. Can y'all say good morning really loud? Maybe they'll hear us back there. Yeah. Say good morning. Good morning. Loud. Really loud. All right. All right. How are y'all today? Good. All right, guys. I want y'all to listen up. When I call your name, I want you to say here. Okay? Ivy? Callie? Here. Carson? Here. Harry? Here. What am I doing? Do you know what I'm doing? Calling I'm calling Roe, right? I'm calling Roe. I bet your teacher, I bet if you're in school, your teacher does that every day, don't they? Yeah. Don't they call Roe? All right, so thank goodness you have a name because it would take me a long time to call Roe if I had to say little girl in the pink dress or the little girl with brown hair. It would take me a long time if you didn't have a name. And you've got a blue dress, that's right. <laughs> All right, so your name is very important, right? Did you know that one of the most exciting times in your mom and dad's life was when you were born and the first gift they gave you was what? Your name. Your name, that's right. Your name is so special and so important. Even the Bible talks about how God knows our name. There, there's over a hundred Bible verses that tells this, that God knows our name. He knew our name before we were born, before our moms named us, didn't he? Now, your name is something you will have and use for the rest of your life. Did you know your name has meanings? Did you know that? There are books with name meanings, or you can go online with the help, help with a parent. But I looked up some names just for fun. I looked up my name, and it said pledged to God. I looked up Brother Don's name, too. Do you know what it meant? It meant world leader. Yeah. That's what Brother Don meant. <laughs> So this will be something fun for you and your parents to do, is to look up your meaning of your names. Now, so that's enough about our name. Guys, listen. Boys, listen. That's enough about our name, isn't it? I'm going to talk about a name this morning, and I don't want you to, na to yell it out, because you're probably going to guess it before I get finished. But we're going to talk about a name this morning that is far greater than our name. Don't say it. Don't say it. Be real still. And if you can sit really still and not yell my answer out, I got something special I'm going to let you hold here in just a minute. All right. Now, don't yell the answer if you know it, okay? But the name that I'm going to tell you, I've got it wrapped in a box because it's a special gift from God, this name is. Don't yell it. Don't yell it. But Acts 4.12 says that it's, there's no other name like it. There's no other name like it. In Genesis, the first book of the Bible, it says he's the creator. In Revelations, it says that he's the Alpha and the Omega. Do you know what that means? What does that mean? What does that mean? It means the beginning and the end. He's the Prince of Peace. <laughs> it's the king of, he is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords, and He is the Messiah. He is the Lamb of God. Do you know who this is? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Jesus. That's right. That's my, that's my name this morning. And do you know what Jesus means? Baby. It means, it means the Lord saves. That's right. Baby Jesus was in a manger, right? So Jesus, the name Jesus means what? Tell me. It means the Lord saves. Now, what is this special name? Tell me again. What is the special name? I need to hear you say it. Jesus. That's right. Now, and it means Lord saves. Now, see, through his name, guys, listen. I've got some boys talking. Listen. Through his name and believing in his name as Lord and Savior is how we are saved. How one day we can, we can be in heaven with him. Just saying that name just gives me peace, doesn't it? Can y'all say that name really, really loud? Jesus. Say that. Jesus. That's right. Now, your mom had a really big part in giving you your name, didn't she? But guess what? Jesus' mom, she didn't, she didn't have that choice. 
In Luke 1, 31, it says, An angel is talking to Mary and says, You will be with child and give birth to a son and are to give him the name of what? Jesus. Jesus. Good job. Jesus. That's right. And there's no other name than Jesus. Now, there is another name for Jesus, and it's called Christ. Can you say that? And that's the true meaning of, listen guys, I'm going to get your attention now. That's the true meaning of Christmas. That's the true meaning of Christmas. From the manger where his name meant hope, peace, and Emmanuel, to the cross where his name means eternal life, redeemer, savior. God gave us this name to praise and worship and to follow. And I'm going to end with this. And then we're going to sing a song about the wonderful name of Jesus. What a wonderful time of the year Christmas is. It's time with our families. It's time we get special gifts. Did you know Jesus got gifts, didn't he? So it's okay to get gifts. All right. And all that stuff. But it would be even greater and even better if you give your life to Jesus. And that means that, okay, listen. That means that you would have your name written in the book of life. That's God's row book. I know that all of you want to be on the nice list this Christmas and not the naughty list, but having your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life or God's row book is far more important. Can you imagine when God opens that book up one day? And remember when I was calling your name earlier? Can you imagine God saying your name? Can you imagine that? He'll call your name and that's going to be that you're going to live with Jesus forever. So what a wonderful day it is today to give your life to Jesus. The only name that matters. This is one of the most important decisions that you're going to make is to be in God's rope book. Okay? All right, Brother Kevin's going to come up and pray. And then we are going to stand up and we're going to sing a song about the name of Jesus. Dear Lord, thank you for this day and the many blessings you've given us. We're so thankful for these children and uh, the hope and peace that they give us about the future of our church and the future of our country. We're thankful for the folks and all the hard work that they put in to help them to just, we pray for our, uh, ourselves in the church that we can guide them and direct them in the way that you have them and how they should. We're so thankful for your son and for this beautiful name that Jesus and Lisa talked about. Okay, while we're getting everybody situated, if y'all would, we'll go ahead and ask y'all to stand and we'll go ahead and get ready to start in our song service today.
me It's the only name that matters to me And yours is the name, the name that has saved me Mercy and grace, the power that forgave me And your love is all I've ever needed Yours will be the only name that matters to me The only one whose favor I seek The only name that matters to me Good morning, church. How are you today? Saved, glad, and happy. Amen. Saved, glad, and happy, and me too. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Y'all can just sit down if you want to for just a minute. I'm going to make a few announcements. I'll read a card and uh, welcome you to Corinth Baptist Church, Darden, Tennessee. We got folks in the sanctuary. We got a good congregation of folks here this morning in the sanctuary. We got a remote sanctuary back in the fellowship hall. We got several folks who are back there this morning in the remote sanctuary. And then we got an online congregation that joined us 
across the United States of America, and we welcome every, each and every one of you into our service today. It's a good day to be alive and to be serving the Lord. I want to start with a thank you card. It comes from the family of Paul White. Thank you so very much. Thank you, each and every one of you, for the love shown to our family during the loss of our loved one. One of the greatest blessings of the church is the comfort received during a tragedy. We love all of you, the Paul White family. I learned something. But the Paul was one of those guys that you could always learn something by. Uh, when I was privileged to go to his funeral and hear his family members remember him, they made a statement that he had made years ago, and I've never forgotten it. I'm going to carry it with me as long as I live. That if you help a person when he has a need, he will never forget you. But if you help somebody who doesn't have a need, he'll never remember it. Now, that's not exactly like when Mr. Paul shared it, but that's the truth of it. His house burned years ago, and he told him about going to Decaturville, and uh, there was a merchant over there that helped him in his time of need, and Brother Paul never forgot it in all the days of his life. We'll miss him, but we haven't lost him. We know where he's at. He's joined some of our friends and neighbors and loved ones who are in the portals of glory with the Lord Jesus Christ. And man, what a blessing to have Christmas with Jesus. Amen? It just don't get no better than that. Just don't get no better than that. Welcome to Corinth. Thank you for your continual financial support of the Lord's work. Uh, they're giving opportunities here in Sunday school. Many of you have already given your tithes and offerings in Sunday school. Uh, they are, there are buckets that are located throughout the sanctuary as you enter the building or leave the building. You may place your offerings in those buckets. And on the last congregational song this morning, you'll have the privilege, to, we call it Belation style, if you'd like to come around and lay your offering in the plate here at the altar. Uh, we'll do that on the last song this morning. And of course, you can mail your tithes and offerings. Those of you who are online and... You can mail your tithes and offerings to Corinth Baptist Church, care of Tammy White, 1885 Iron Hill Road, Parsons, Tennessee, 38363. Tonight we'll be having uh, services at 6 p.m. Uh, the children's department will also have some activity this evening, a dough holy night in the fellowship hall. Uh, that is tonight. I'm not sure exactly what all it is, but it sounds like a sweet occasion to me. I think they're going to be doing cookies tonight. Uh, so anyway, that is tonight. Bring the kids and come on for no holy night. Uh, we got a couple of uh, uh, baby announcements here. Baby shower for Clinton, Ashley Bobo, January the 10th. That's a boy. Uh, tells where it's registered in the bulletin and also a baby box in connecting the hallway for Allie and Ryan Philpot, and it's a boy. Baby dedication on January, the, in January of next year. And you need to see Suzanne to give them the names of your children, your babies. Okay, Wednesday night, 6 o'clock, we got a one of youth and Bible study all at 6 o'clock. We're going to be in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. We're going to be dealing with tongues. And I'm going to be teaching in the native tongue wherein I was born. I'm going to do it scripturally. That's what they did in the book of Acts. And uh, there'll be some, perhaps there'll be some miracle ears there like there were in the book of Acts experience. But anyway, that's Wednesday evening. Uh, we're in the room across from the water fountain and the nursery. Our memory verse during this time of pandemic has been 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. The occasion was the dedication of King Solomon's temple and the promises made from God Almighty. This is what he has to say. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. And brother, we need healing in America today. I've never seen our country as divided as it is today. But we can come together. Jesus Christ is the common cause around which every person can rally. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And if you don't know him as your Savior and Lord, it's a good time to come to him and receive him in the forgiveness of your sins and the salvation of your soul. Let's pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, it is with gratitude in our heart that we come on this occasion, Lord. We know that there are those who are bereaved because of the passing of their loved ones. But at the same time, Lord... 
We know what an exciting experience it must be to experience celebrating Christmas, the birth of Christ, with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Father, we just thank you for every good thing that's happened in our lives, every good gift, every perfect gift. We know comes from the Father of lights with whom is neither variable nor shadow of turning. God, we pray for those who may be sick today that you'll watch over them and care for them. For those, Lord, that are in the nursing homes, those who are in the hospitals, those who are sick at home, we know you're the great physician. And we pray, God, that you would attend to each and every need. Father, today, I pray you'd watch over our nation, Lord. I pray that somehow that we would truly repent of our sins as a nation and come back to the foot of the cross, God. We pray for another great spiritual awakening in this nation, God. Maybe not be drawn apart by controversy, but drawn together by the love of God. Father, take us and use us in this service. We pray bless every home, every family represented here in this sanctuary and, and throughout the building and throughout this world today, Father. May the power and presence of the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ abide on every person. For we ask it in Christ's name, in the forgiveness of our sins, and amen. amen. We will continue with our song service. Okay, if you would, we'll stand, we'll continue. Let's just not sing this song. Let's claim this song this morning. Claim this song for your own. Bye. 
There's a lot of things, while they're getting resituated up here, there's a lot of things that's changed this year. This, to, to say that uh, 2020 was a different year would be an understatement uh, because a lot of things have changed. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of things <clears throat> that hasn't changed this year uh, and things that will never change. Uh, we all know the Christmas story of how Christ came, uh, was born of a virgin, and how that... Uh, God created a, or sent a light, a great light or a star to guide the wise men to where Jesus was. Um, and <clears throat> that light was guiding them to hope. And that's, that too has not changed. So uh, this morning as we sing this song about the, the star, uh, just remember that the star does, it leads us to hope. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, giving the light for those who long have gone, guiding the
This will be our offertory song, uh, offertory song. So, uh, would you care to listen, prayer, James? This is our Arbitor song. truth they travel from afar hoping to find the child from heaven and falling on their knees they bow before the humble prince of peace I bring an offering of worship to my king
in the house of the Lord on this beautiful Lord's Day morning. Got your Bibles. I want you to join me in reading from the writings of a converted fisherman. His name was John. And we're going to the book of First John and we're going into chapter 1. Book of First John, but keep your Bibles handy. I like to preach the Bible, preach the book. So keep your Bibles handy. Of all the events of celebration on the Christian calendar, Christmas is probably the most abused of all the celebrations. To some, Christ is left out completely. To them, it is Merry Xmas. I got news for you folks. You can't have Christmas without Jesus. So don't try to X my Jesus out. To others, Christmas is about movies that attach the name Christmas to shows that have fake snow, fake winter scenes, temporary romance, and for months on end, they entertain with, quote, family, unquote, movies with Christmas titles, and none of the Christ of Christmas to the entertainment world, y'all got problems, because you can't have Christmas without Christ and Christmas is a special day of the year. In fact, it's a part of the Christian season of Advent. And according to Webster's Dictionary, Advent is the four Sundays prior to Christmas, and even Webster says the birthday of Christ. Christmas is the birthday of Christ. You can't have Christmas without Christ. The business world. They think it's a season that begins with Black Friday, goes through Thanksgiving specials, ends with free shipping and guaranteed delivery before the holidays. If you get your credit card out and sign up for, a, well, for the added value, of we're going to send you two for the price of one with added shipments. Christmas is more than just commercials, friends. My Christmas is about Christ. Somebody needs to get a grip on Christmas. Wouldn't you agree with me? Somebody needs to get a handle on it. Somebody needs to get a grip on Christmas. Well, this fisherman that we're about to read about did. He had a brother named John. Their father was Zebedee, and they were in the fishing business on the Sea of Galilee. James and John were sons of Zebedee, and Jesus passed by when they were mending their nets. Jesus was about 30 years of age at the time. You passed up Christmas, the birth of Jesus. No, I haven't. I'm just telling you about the author of the book that we're going to read about, read in right now. Jesus passed by, called them. The Bible says immediately they left their ships and their father and they followed Jesus. You'll find that in Matthew 4, 21 and 22. And from that moment on, they followed Jesus three years. They were part of the inner circle of Jesus' disciples 
When you read about the disciples, you'll find them in groups. Peter, James, and John were their primary groups. John really did get a grip on Christmas. We said somebody needs to get a grip on Christmas. John got a grip on Christmas. If you don't believe it, read what he says here. In the book of 1 John chapter 1, beginning in verse 1, that which was from the beginning, chalk that up and hang on to it for just a minute, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard and which we have seen with our eyes and which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. He handled him. He got a grip on Jesus. For the life was manifested, we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ and these things write we unto you that your joy, that your joy, that your joy may be full. Let's get it right on Christmas, okay? Let's get it right on Christmas. Notice what John said. John says in the first part of this first verse, that which was from the beginning. When did Jesus begin? I know there's some folks that say that he was nothing more than a human being born in Bethlehem and lived in Nazareth. I'm going to tell you what, folks, he's more than just a human being. He was God-man. And contrary to the ideas of some folks, my Jesus did not begin in Bethlehem. His day one is an eternity one. Eternity past. John writes in the gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now what's this beginning? I think the beginning here, he's talking about a beginning of time, is before the beginning from that which was from the beginning. We count the beginning in time, God counts beginning in eternity. And my Lord has always been here in eternity, but he spoke the world into existence. And we speak of his ministry in the Old Testament as the pre-incarnate Christ. The ministry of Christ before he took on human form, was born of a woman, born of a virgin, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger before that he was. In fact, Jesus himself made that great statement before Abraham was, I am. He's always been here. But the Old Testament prophets had a desire to know God, to see God, to personally be with God, to have the permanent presence of God in their midst. And Jesus fulfilled the fondest of their dreams when he was born, took on human form and was born to of a virgin, that which was from the beginning. Look what else it says about it. Which we have heard. John had personally witnessed the ministry of Jesus in the Galilee, in Jerusalem, in the mountains of Samaria. He heard him when the Sermon on the Mount was preached. Yet John was there. John was there. There was a group of folks in that day that they called a seamist, or at least I want to call them a seamist, because they said, you know, he wasn't really God, he just seemed to be God. All kinds of weird ideas then and now. No, John says, wait a minute here, I know he was God come to mankind because I have seen him and I have heard him. I have seen him with my eyes, we have looked upon him, we have, had, we have heard him. Our hands have handled, our hands have, he got a grip on Christmas, our hands have handled, our hands have handled of the word of life. Now not only did John handle Jesus, remember he was there at the upper room at the Last Supper and he leaned on Jesus' bosom in that room. Remember that? 
John was kind of a personal attendant to Jesus. Day and night. He had the privilege of caring for the needs of Jesus and helping Jesus. He was there in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was in that inner group. Peter, James, he was there with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter, James, and John. And John was there. And he said, we have handled him. And not only that, he was one of the most intimate friends that Jesus had for three years. But on the cross... Do you remember on the cross? Do you remember on the cross? As John and a group stood there beholding the crucifixion of the Lamb of God, and there stood that disciple whom Jesus loved. His name was John. His name was John. That disciple whom Jesus loved. And Jesus looked down at his mother. And he said, Woman, behold thy son. Then said Jesus to the disciple whom he loved, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her unto his own home. Can you imagine that? Physically, he got a grip on Christmas. Physically, he took care of Jesus' mother from the time that her son Jesus was crucified until she died a natural death in the city of Jerusalem. And the Bible doesn't give the details, but evidently he had to wrap and anoint the body of Mary, the earthly mother of Jesus, and though the Bible doesn't say, I kind of think in my mind that he may have had a part in burying, burying the mother of Jesus. And John says, our hands have handled of the word of life. John knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's talking about. He got a grip on Christmas. You can get a grip on Christmas. How did John know about the Christmas story? That doesn't write as many details as the other four Gospels write, but John writes enough. How did he have the real details of Christmas? Well, he traveled with Jesus for three years. And then he took Mary, the mother of Jesus, into his home and heard firsthand the account of the angels <laughs> They traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem and they flight into Egypt and what it was like to raise a perfect child. To raise a perfect child. John understood the purpose of Christmas. You know what Christmas says? You know what Christmas declares? He writes in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil is a sinner from the beginning. Now look what it says next. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. You know how Jesus came? He came to see, seeking to save sinners, right? He came to be God's demonstration of love on the face of the earth, but more than that, he came to destroy the works of the devil. God hates sin. Yeah, God is a God of love, but He's also a God of hate. In Zechariah 8, 17, all these things I hate, saith the Lord. And when you stop and think about it, no wonder God hates sin. Sin took the scepter out of the hand of His only Son and replaced the scepter with nail prints. Sin took the crown of glory from the head of his only begotten son. And because of sin, there was a crown of thorns that was placed upon his brow. Sin took Jesus from the throne of glory and put him on a cruel Roman cross. Christmas reminds us that God hates sin. God sent his only begotten son. Isn't it ironic? that the most sacred holiday on the Christian calendar is Christmas? 
And yet for some, it is one of the most sinful seasons of the entire year. Ungodly parties, ungrateful shoppers, <laughs> and a world that wants to remove his name, his word, and his memory off of the brow of the youth of this nation. Why Christmas signifies in John recorded God hates sin. Christmas also reminds us that God loves the sinner. God loves the sinner. John writes of it in 1 John chapter 4, verse 14. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, the angel said, because he shall save his people from their sins. You see, Jesus came to earth so that we could go to heaven. Jesus was born a virgin so that we could get born again. Jesus had to come as he did of a virgin to be what he was, sinless. To do what he did, he died for us on the cross of Calvary. John understood that great fact that God hates sin, but God loves the sinner. And he writes about it. He writes about it. To get a real grip on Christmas, you need to be saved and know you're saved. To get a real grip on Christmas, to understand the real meaning of Christmas, you need to be saved and understand that you are saved. John got Christmas right. Listen to what he has to say over here in the book of 1 John chapter 5, closing chapter of this little book in the Bible. Verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Could have had a more appropriate children's worship this morning. The names in the Bible for Jesus. And of all the names that are given in the Bible, there is one summation. There is no name under heaven or given among men whereby you must be saved but Jesus. Isn't that amazing? These things are written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Do you know that you're saved? You could never understand Christmas. You could never enjoy Christmas until you know that Jesus is your Savior and your Lord. Somebody said, well, I know because I've seen an angel. Well, what does that prove? Satan transforms himself into an angel of light sometimes. Somebody else says, I know because I've seen some balls of fire. What does that prove? My Bible says the devil is able to make fire come down out of the sky and deceive them that are on the earth. You know why I know I'm saved? Because I have done what God said do in the book. I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at this last chapter in the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, the Savior, is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begat, loveth also him that is begotten of him. When you love Jesus, you love others. Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if you have loved one for another. I pastored several churches during my ministry. I have never pastored a church more loving than the Corinth Baptist Church. I have never. We have a lot of sweet things. I said sweet things. That's not just talking about what's going to happen tonight in our children's department, but we have a lot of sweet things that happen at Corinth Baptist Church. I saw one of the sweetest scenes when I pulled up this morning. In fact, it was a double blessing. There was a mama in our parking lot in the road out here walking in the sunshine. And I said it was a double blessing because she had a carriage that holds two precious babies 
And Sammy was walking out. That's one of the sweetest scenes I think I ever saw. I mean, to have one child in a baby carriage, that is a blessing to have twins. <laughs> oh, my, that's a double blessing from God. I wish I could just have captured that. I don't know why I didn't take a picture of my phone and capture it. That was one of the sweetest scenes that I think I've ever seen on the face of the earth. To see boys and girls and men and women get out of their cars on Sunday morning <laughs> and the little fellas just can't get, wait to get in the house of God. Boy, it don't get no better than that. They have these precious children and I kept trying to count them this morning. They kept multiplying. You know why? Because they kept moving around. And I first saw we had 27, then I thought we had 35, and then I thought we had 37. I realized I'd done counting one or two of them twice, so I just gave up. I don't know how many we had. But Jesus loves every one of them, and we do too, don't we? By this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if you have love one for another. Christmas is a time of giving. The wise men brought gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. The greatest gift that you could ever receive is to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord. So I'm going to tell you how to be saved, last of all. I'm going to leave the writing of John, who got a real grip on Christmas. Our hands have handled the word of life. And I'm going to Paul's writing in the book of Romans, Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus came to this old world because everybody had sinned. He is the only sinless, perfect that person that ever lived on the face of the earth. He was without sin. He didn't die for his sins. He died for my sins and for yours. I want to take you to Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift, Christmas is a time of giving, but the gift of eternal life is Jesus. Eternal life is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You can receive that gift today. I'm going to tell you how. Paul writes in the book of Romans chapter 10. Beginning in verse 8, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart, and that is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess to thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich of all that call upon him. And here's Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Get Christmas right. Get saved, man. You know why? On the Christian calendar, we have been in a season called Advent. It was its first Advent. Webster says it is four Sundays prior to Christmas, the birthday of Jesus. Who knows? We may be getting ready today for the second Advent. The last four Sundays before Jesus comes again in the clouds of glory. you know for sure, preacher, that it's going to happen four weeks from now or three weeks from now or two weeks from now or one week from now? No, I don't know for sure that it will, but you don't know for sure that it won't. And if I were lost, I would not take the chance. Let's pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we come on this Sunday... In a time when we're ready for the grand finale, for the Christmas Day event, the time when we celebrate the birth of the Savior of the world. And God, there may be somebody on the sound of our voice here in the sanctuary, in the remote sanctuary, or at home that does not have a true grip on Christmas because they do not know Jesus as Savior and as Lord. I pray that today will be for them the day of salvation. 
Jesus came to defeat Satan and all of his dirty tricks and to prove to mankind his great love for sinners. And we understand, Lord, you made it simple. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. It is not of works, lest any man should boast. So God, if there's anybody here today that's never received the greatest gift of all times, the forgiveness of their sin and the salvation of their soul, may they cry out to Jesus. There's no other name under heaven or among men that will save you except the name of Jesus. May they cry out to Jesus today and receive that gift of forgiveness and salvation. For those who need to come publicly, God, give them the courage and the strength to do so today. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand together. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Will you hear his voice? Will you get a real grip on Christmas by receiving Jesus as your Savior and your personal Lord? Will you do it today? Will you do it today? He's calling for you and he's calling for me. Will you come today? Will you come today? It's God's invitation. It's not just the preachers and not just the church. It's God's invitation for sinners. God loves you. Loves you so much that He sent the very best that heaven had. He's only begotten Son. Die in our place on the cross of Calvary so that we could have the forgiveness of our sins and the salvation of our soul. Let's sing another verse. If God moves on your heart, come today, will you? Why should we tarry while Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and pleading for me? He stands with open and outstretched arms. Will you come to him today? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies? Will you come today? Maybe you're looking for a church home, a place of fellowship and many meaningful Christian service. Why don't you come join with us here in Corinth as we reach out literally around the world with the good news of God's love for every man. Something God wants you to do, something you need to do. Will you do it today? I appreciate your joyfulness today in the service and your prayerfulness and your attention. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate the folks that are joined with us online. The arm of the Lord is not shortened. He can reach out wherever you are today to touch you, forgive you, cleanse you, save you. He has healing power. It's available for the asking. Bow your head for just a moment. Father, forgive us. Of our sins, help us, Lord, to be more like Jesus every day that we live. And help us, Lord, we pray, to share the good news of Christ's first coming and the nearness of his second coming. May a lost and dying world be warned. We pray, God, for repentance and for faith to be exercised. And we know, Lord, that the greatest gift of all time can be received by simple, believing, trusting faith. Dismiss us in your love and mercy. Watch over us. Care for our nation. Keep us safe. Keep our people safe. Keep our homes safe. Keep our teenagers safe. Keep our children safe, Lord. We depend upon you totally and completely in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a good rest of the day. See you tonight.